Hi everybody, it's Hannah here from Blue Ferret Boarding and this month we've been looking at ferrets in the wild. Now, so rather than looking at wild ferrets because we wouldn't be able to give you any content, we've been looking at their closest equivalents. As I've said, the European polecat. We looked last week at the steppe polecat and this week to cap it all off, we're going to look at the black footed ferret, also known as the American polecat and we're going to have a very quick look at European mink as well. So let's make a start. Okay, so the black footed ferret then. This is not a black footed ferret. There is no way this is a black footed ferret. This is just one of ours. But I wanted to bring him in because some of the colorings and some of the shape are the beginning of what you'd be looking for. Again, please do not look at this and think he is a black footed ferret. The hint is in the feet, they're not black. Um, but I will be putting up a picture of a black footed ferret for you. However, little Carto here has a lot of the yellow coloring that you would find. Black footed ferrets or American polecats um, are a similar size to their European and steppe cousins. However, they are, have a longer, more slender body. So in a way, when you were to look at them, they're more representative in the shape and the proportions of something like a stoat, but they are bigger as an animal. So they're much more slender. They have shorter, more triangular ears that are wider at the base. Their muzzle's a little bit shorter. Now, little carto has got quite a long little mousy muzzle, so it's not ideal from that point of view. But he has got that slightly longer sort of body shape going on, which is why I chose him. However, he is absolutely tiny, so he's not representative from that point. What we are looking at, though, the yellowness of his body here, certainly the underneath yellow and the yellow around here, is a similar yellow to the black-footed ferret. However, the black-footed ferret, I'm going to keep saying that and I'm going to fall over it in a minute, the, it's literally, the top is very, very dark brown, like you'd see in a, a European polecat, very, very dark brown. And as it comes down the side, it's it's starting to move into that creamy colour. So by, by the point you're halfway down the side, it's a creamy colour. Their legs are black, again, like the steppe and European polecat cousins, and the ear tips are black. The black-footed ferrets actually have fur covering the bottom of their paws and their claws. And I do wonder whether, because their area is Central America area, I do wonder whether that might be to protect them a little bit from the sand and the heat. I have no idea. If you know, though, do please tell me. Another name for black-footed ferrets is prairie dog hunters. And that is because 90% or so of their diet is actually made up of prairie dog. So that is what they're eating. Now, black-footed ferrets, unlike their European and their steppe cousins, are on the scale of endangerment. They, as it were, they are considered endangered. And actually, at one point, they were labelled, I think it was in 1979, they were labelled as extinct until two years later, a very small population was discovered in the wild, still in existence. And from that, they were able to take some into a captive breeding programme and then reintroduce them as the wild. They are still therefore classed as endangered. And it is for that reason that there are many of the uh, US states of America that it is illegal for you to own a ferret because if any of the ferrets got out, got wild, they could um, mate and reproduce with the black-footed ferret, which would produce a hybridization, which would be um, disastrous for the fate of the black-footed species of ferret. Confined to America, often called the American polecat, endangered species. That is why I think there's eight US states, as I say, it's in Mexico, Central America, and I think there's a few in Canada as well now. That is why there are several of the US states where it is illegal to own ferrets because of the risk of hybridization, which could be fatal to the species that is the black footed ferret. We're going to take a super quick look at European mink, and then that's us done 
for this month. Now, again, I do not have any European mink. You need licenses to keep them. Let's not even go into that. They are a wild animal. However, what I've done is <laughs> I've picked a bigger lad who's got a slightly wider face. Again, more so you've got a bit of ferret porn, really, so that you can really just look at a ferret while we're talking about them. And I've got a model to kind of use. So the major difference between the mink is that a mink is semi-aquatic. So you will find a little bit more webbing between the paws so that they can swim a little bit more. They have um, a thicker, especially in the winter, they have a more dense, thicker fur, which is obviously what is prized. And the European mink, imagine that this dude, rather than being all white, is actually all brown. And what he would have is in this little bit area here of his muzzle, he would have a small amount of white just above his mouth and just above the lips. And that is indicative that it would be a European mink, again, where the American mink are pretty much dark the whole way through. Um, the European mink have a slightly wider face, but they don't have a necessarily specific, um, specifically evolved jaws the way I've talked about with some of the other animals. They have quite a long body and unlike our boy here they have quite a long tail and the tail itself can actually almost be the half the length of the body as well. So the European mink then its its dietary requirements are slightly different in that it will feed more on the amphibian sort of fish amphibian area so it'll be voles, fish, frogs, toads and insects so it is quite actually quite different to the polecat which is a slightly more distant cousin the mink are slightly larger than the polecat but again not by a great amount and from what i believe they're not as big as their american cousins either that's it for september in october we're going to be looking at other types of mustelid so again i'm a little bit out of my comfort zone so these are going to be shorter videos to just give you an idea and then you can hoof yourself off and find out more until then you guys take care if you know anything more about these animals we've been talking about do please tell us and if i've got anything wrong do please let us know in the comments below have you enjoyed it have you enjoyed what i've been talking about if so like us on facebook follow us on youtube at blue ferret tv and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.